Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In 1911, the chief chemist at the Department of Agriculture made some prophecies. He predicted that Earth was going to continue to cool and get cold all the way to the equator. He said that the world's coal supply was rapidly disappearing and would disappear from the Earth. But he said that mankind would be rescued by electricity from windmills, dynamos, and the storage battery. Everything in the story is very familiar, except that he was talking about global cooling instead of global warming. And 110 years later, climate prophets are predicting exactly the same thing about coal, windmills, and storage batteries. This article was written on January 1st, 1911, but the following month things really warmed up. There was record heat in Texas at the beginning of February 1911, with temperatures getting up to 93 degrees in Fort Worth. And May of 1911 brought an unprecedented heat wave to the United States, with temperatures in New England over 100 degrees. It's not difficult to imagine the mass hysteria which would occur now if New England got up to 100 degrees during May. As the summer progressed, the heat got even worse. 1911 brought the hottest July 4th on record to the United States. The Boston Globe reported 112 degrees in Maine and 110 degrees in New Hampshire on July 4th, 1911. A July 1911 heat wave killed thousands of New Englanders and sent many over the brink of madness. During 11 hellish days, horses dropped in the street and babies didn't wake up from their naps. People were committing suicide to escape the heat and death toll estimates were as high as 2,000 people in New England. But the heat wave was even worse on the other side of the pond. During a 70-day heat wave that summer, more than 40,000 people died in Paris. At least 1,000 people died in Germany and Australia was having a winter heat wave as well. Now let's fast forward 110 years and look at the latest climate geniuses. The guy on the left says that Britain is going to be 100% wind powered by the year 2030. Pretty much the same story as was being said back in 1911. Three years ago, Britain went more than nine consecutive days without any wind power. I wonder if it occurred to these people that that might be a problem. Three days ago, wind and solar power in the United Kingdom produced less than 12% of their total electricity needs and 55% of their electricity was coming from fossil fuels. I wonder if the people at the Glasgow Climate Conference knew how much CO2 they were emitting. Generating wind-powered electricity when the wind's not blowing or solar power when the sun's not shining might seem to be problematic. But they solved this problem in Spain a few years ago. The government was subsidizing solar-powered electricity, so people started generating diesel-powered electricity and selling it as solar and making a large profit off of it. More than 4,200 solar installations didn't actually exist. Cheating like this can get you in trouble, so somebody came up with a technological solution. By running electricity through light bulbs over the solar panel, they can generate solar-powered electricity with only about 70% loss of power. The green energy industry has run into a little problem called the laws of thermodynamics. The world can't actually run off of magical green energy. However, a few years ago, a girl from Springfield developed technology which gets around this limitation, but her father shut the technology down. I'm worried about the kids, homie. Lisa's becoming very obsessive. This morning, I caught her trying to dissect her own raincoat. I know. And this perpetual motion machine she made today is a joke. It just keeps going faster and faster. Lisa, get in here. <laughs> in this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Homer doesn't fall for the green energy scam. This isn't surprising because he works at a nuclear power plant. But unfortunately, the people running our countries aren't as bright or as handsome as Homer. Toto likes Lisa's idea, but he doesn't think it's actually going to work. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.